ワンオンワンテック始まりますクロスレグの中川です今日は Google の東京オフィスからお送りします今回あのジェミニなど Google のあらゆる AI を生み出す研究部門 Google ディープマインドの幹部にインタビューする機会を得ましたテーマはジェミニと AI 研究の舞台裏ですクロスリグでも Google の AI について何度も取り上げてきましたけれども、今ですね、次なる AI モデル、ジェミニ 3.0 が近日中にリリースされるのではないかと観測が広がっています。短い時間なんですが、ここ1年ほどで Google が勢いづいてきた理由だったり、今後のジェミニの方向性についていろいろ伺っていきたいと思います。Google ディープマインド、ライダ・イブラヒム CEO のインタビューです。ぜひ最後までご覧ください。So,、um, our media, we cover a lot about AI, and our viewers are so excited to know where AI goes next, or even especially where Gemini goes next. So, how do you describe the current phase of Gemini, and what do we expect on the road ahead? Yes.、Uh, well, thank you for having me here today.、Yeah. Gemini is our most advanced AI large language model, s and we've been working on it for very many years. We like to think of it as Uh, our most general, most capable model.、Mm. We developed Gemini to be multimodal from the beginning, which means being able to take language, video, images, coding, audio, take it as input and also have it as output.、Mm-hmm. And this is very important because this is how we as humans interact. And so rather than needing to always type or to have some type of technology barrier, we thought it was important for this. Powerful family of models to be multimodal from the start.、Mm-hmm. Now, we've made a lot of really great progress.、Um, I'm most excited about some of our work in education this year,、uh, and we still have a lot more work to do.、Mm-hmm. Our ambition is to really have it more as a world model. And by that, we mean being able to understand the context around us. The AI can understand the context in the world,、mm-hmm. it can be a better universal assistant、mm-hmm. for us as humans.、Mm-hmm. But there's still many technologies and many breakthroughs that we need to have in the areas of like memory or understanding context, reasoning. Also, internationalization is increasingly important. So,、mm-hmm. it's, we've made, again, we've made very good progress, and there's still more work to do. Right. Are we actually seeing Gemini 3.0 soon? Because indiv- even Sundar Pichai reacted to hype on social media. Yeah, well, I can neither confirm nor deny, but what I can say is that we're continuously working on making Gemini、uh, more improved for usage.、Mm-hmm. And I think this is a lot about、uh, the pace of the technology right now, of being able to learn from what we're doing、uh, and learn from the inputs that people are, are sharing, not just the users, but also the companies, the academic institutions we work with. We want AI to be more grounded、mm-hmm. in reality, to be more factual, to be more responsible、mm-hmm. stewards of the technology. And that requires us to continue, have continuous improvement.、Mm-hmm. Kaizen.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So, how do you see the future of Gemini? What do you guys talk about inside Google DeepMind right now? Yeah. Well, you know, Gemini is just one of the many different types of technologies that we work on. So, within the、uh, large language models,、uh, multimodal modules, Of course,、uh, Gemini is something that we're continuing to improve. How do you make it more factual, better reasoning, understand concepts so that it can be work more towards a universal assistant? But we also have a lot of work、uh, that's happening in the areas of science,、um, different scientific areas. Our thought is if we can unlock our understanding of the world, then we are able to create better solutions. So that might be working with researchers on better understanding. Diseases、mm-hmm. to come up with better therapeutics, or how to deal with pollution,、mm-hmm. or how to have better energy sources. Right. So, you have now not only Gemini, and, but also like image and video generation models, robotics models, like even AI agents.、Yes. So, how will Google's AI change our lives?、Uh, how will regular people interact with AI? What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, we're already seeing around the world、um, how different people are using the technology both as a productivity tool or creativity, as you mentioned. And it can be an、uh, everyday person who、uh, wants to create a birthday card for maybe their family or friends.、Um, you know, my colleague created a book for his niece.、Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's some very nice everyday examples. Even for someone like me, where、uh, 
you know, for writing an email sometimes, I need to get started, or writing a paper, I need to brainstorm a little bit. So how can I use the AI to help brainstorm and maybe help me get a general frame of an outline mm -hmm. that I can then build? Um, so I think there's a lot of ways that people are using the te technology today to maximize their mm -hmm. potential. Um, maybe I can share a couple other examples. Um, one is in my personal life, for example, um, we've just moved into a new home and it has a lot of technology, sometimes too much even for me. Mm -hmm. So I uploaded my uh, user manuals into Notebook LM and now whenever I have a problem with my washing machine or my dishwasher, I can just ask mm -hmm. Notebook LM mm -hmm. to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe one example. Another is uh, I have twin daughters and they mm -hmm. learn very differently. And so sometimes as a parent, I need to try to help them. Mm -hmm. But because they learn differently, I can ask Gemini on how to teach things, even though they're twins. One is much more of a visual and audio learner. So how do I, and she likes certain things, like she likes music and mm -hmm. she likes uh, football, soccer. And the other one likes, uh, uh, has other hobbies. She likes poetry. So being able to be a better parent because I can now assist my kids in the way, in a way that resonates with them. Mm -hmm. And I think finding these very, using the technology, but finding these very human aspects of it uh, is very important. Mm -hmm. that, may I just say that mm -hmm. I think one of the great things about Gemini has been we built a very long context window. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? The, that's the prompt window. That's where you can ask the question. And when AI first started to make um, advancements, people had to think about how to write the exactly mm. perfect prompt. Mm. But nowadays, because you can write as much, you can do it in a very natural way. Mm. You can do it as audio. Uh, you can take a picture of a homework assignment mm. and ask for assistance. So I think this is removing the barriers to using the AI has been something we've worked very hard at making more accessible. Mm. When it comes to agents, what would it like? What would it look like to live with agents, whether that's living a daily life or doing some work? And um, agents is one of the most important project in Google DeepMind. So, what do you think about that? Yes, yeah, so last year we introduced the technology demonstration around um, agentic capability, which is where AI can actually help take action mm -hmm. for you with your permission and your support, um, you giving access. And I think um, you can imagine many times now if you maybe are using AI to plan a trip, but now, or a restaurant, uh, and now you want to make the booking. So I think that will be the first step is being able to take some of these easy tasks or I have to find the uh, summer camp for my I need to plan my summer mm -hmm. schedule for my children. How do I do that? And instead of me taking hours and hours of research and scheduling of an agent being able to help me with those types of tasks, I think that will be the first step. But that requires a lot of very thoughtful and careful planning. There's questions around privacy and how do we, um, how do we manage uh, making sure that I've actually given permission for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. The important thing about this is we've been thinking about it for years. From the first time we had this concept of AI being able to take action, we've been working with our ethics researchers to say what are the questions we need to address and how do we address them not only within Google and Google DeepMind, but with the industry. So working with experts around the world on these questions. Mm -hmm. We're taking a very thoughtful approach right. to this, which is part of the reason why the technology, we're showing the demonstrations, but we haven't probably released it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since early 2023, uh, like when the generative AI sort of took off, um, the pace of Google's AI launch has dramatically changed, I think. The, uh, like not only Gemini, there are also the other models and even agents and robotics and all the launches. So your colleague, CEO Demis Hasabi said that we're pretty much releasing something every day. It's hard to keep up even internally. So how did Google DeepMind do that? Like what drove people at DeepMind to move fast? Yeah, well, um, this is really, we've been working on this mission of build AI responsibly to benefit humanity mm -hmm. for 15 years. The past few years have felt very fast, but they've also been built on over a decade of very, but a lot of thinking mm -hmm. and a lot of careful deliberations to get the technology to where it's at. We've always thought that if we can understand the world around us, then we can, that's the purpose for the AI. 
So what that means is we're finally getting to the point now where the AI technology is stable enough that we can do some of this work mm -hmm. and learn from it. Mm -hmm. And as we learn, we can make those types of iterations. And so I think that's really what has changed. So our culture has always kind of been there. How do we have focus? How do you have people who can think very long term, but be able to act in the near term? Mm -hmm. How do we take a very interdisciplinary approach? You know, that is very much the culture we build. That's different than how most universities operate in a research environment, mm -hmm. right, where they're separate. Mm -hmm. Within DeepMind, we've worked very hard to bring those people together, which is the culture of how do you interact and learn and challenge each other to continue to make the progress. So we've built the culture, the technology has advanced, and I think it's now tran tran kind of feels like it's uh, enabled a faster pace. Mm -hmm. The big reorganization inside Google happened in, uh, around AI. Google's AI efforts were like all over the place, like Google's br Google Brain or other research labs, but all into Google DeepMind right now. So what, what was the decision-making process behind those big reorganizations? Like how did the reorg uh, like accelerate? Efforts. Yeah, so within Google is a place where there's a lot of ideas and a lot of exploration. And usually what happens is the technology exploration happens, and then when the technology is more stable, the teams come together, mm -hmm. and that's why it can also feel like an acceleration. Mm -hmm. So prior to Google DeepMind, there were two teams working on AI. And this is where a lot of the modern day AI breakthroughs have come from, are from both of these teams, both DeepMind and also Google Brain. Mm -hmm. In 2023, we brought those teams together. Mm -hmm. But before we brought the teams together, we brought the, um, organizationally, we brought the teams together to form a team to develop Gemini. And mm -hmm. what does Gemini mean? Mm -hmm. Twins. Mm -hmm. So we had right. the two teams that we brought to make Gemini. But they had been working together for many years already. Uh, we then organizationally brought the teams together. And that meant that we could have now one mission build AI responsibly to benefit humanity. We could organize, we now had enough people to organize differently. Uh, Gemini model team and generative AI, uh, VO, for example, Lyria, many other generative AI models. Foundational research, frontier mm -hmm. AI research. Mm -hmm. How do we get the breakthroughs in things like robotics? Mm -hmm. How do we get breakthroughs in what does it mean, concepts and reasoning? Mm -hmm. And the team focused on science, which is really about how do we enable the scientific community? And then a team that's really thinking about real world impact of how do we take the models, but make sure that there's a through line and that we're delivering to our mission of benefiting humanity. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we've, had very similar backgrounds. We came together and that really unlocked a way of being able to leverage the same computer uh, architecture and infrastructure, the infrastructure that's needed to make this happen, the same talent, mm -hmm. and bringing together an, everyone under the same mission and culture. Mm -hmm. So did, did it contribute to faster launch of every AI products at Google? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's uh, bringing the teams together enabled us to move faster and with a unified purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. So before I let you go, I have to ask about AGI, artificial general intelligence, which CEO Demis Sabius has been talking about. Like he founded Goog Goog uh, he founded DeepMind Technologies in back in 2010, before Google acquired it in 2014, with a 20 year mission towards AGI. So it's been 15 years since then. So we are we like five years away from AGI? Like what do you think? Um, how do you think Google DeepMind approaching it right now? Yes. And as you mentioned, for 15 years now, we've been focused on this mission of if we can solve general, if we can address general intelligence, it can help us understand the world around us. If we understand the world around us, we can now come up with better solutions to live happier, healthier lives. So that's been the intent from the beginning. As the technology has uh, gotten more general and capable, we're seeing a trend towards this. Mm -hmm. I must admit though, there are a lot of, even within DeepMind, questions on timing, different opinions on timing and uh, definitions. Um, and so I think, you know, again, it's less about the words itself and it's more the reality that AI is getting more general and more capable. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to act now to build awareness to help 
help humans, to help us all as society shape the direction the technology is going. Why is Google DeepMind going towards AGI in the first place? Why do we need it? When Demis and Shane first founded DeepMind back in 2010, they really wanted to understand how can they leave a legacy in the world to help solve some of hum humans' biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. Sustainability, uh, disease, and knowing that the tools that we have today are not going to get us there. Mm -hmm. So it takes a new way of thinking, mm -hmm. a new breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So their pursuit of like trying to combine their backgrounds of neuroscience, computer science, mm -hmm. math together mm -hmm. to say, how can we make the next telescope, the next microscope? Yeah. And that was really the pursuit they had. But from the beginning, they took a very thoughtful approach. So first we did gaming, mm -hmm. and the gaming yeah. was, uh, AlphaGo as an example, mm -hmm. was a safe environment. It was a chance to iterate. Mm -hmm. Then we worked on trying to bring it into real world applications. Mm -hmm. Things like AlphaFold, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when Nobel Prize winning yes. breakthrough, which now 190 countries and over three million researchers are using this, including in Japan. We have over 150,000 researchers in mm -hmm. Japan who are using this to understand how to make some crops more resistant to disease or how to deal with industrial waste, mm -hmm. how to understand diseases. Right. So all of this comes back to this mission. If mm -hmm. AI is general, if AI is capable, mm -hmm. it allows us to bring our human creativity mm -hmm. into the problem solving. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we're under this pursuit of more general, more capable AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, AI that benefits humanity. AI that benefits humanity, okay. yes. Great. What is, uh, what part, if I can ask you, what part of AI are you most excited about? Um, for now, productivity. I guess the Gemini helps me work so efficient or like work on something that I should be really creative about. Like I don't have to think about like all the subtle things and like let the, let AI do that, and I have to be creative about the contents and all, yes. all that, everything, yeah. Yeah, another way that um, I've started to experiment a bit more is if you have different personas you're giving, mm -hmm. and then you want to review the material, and then you say, okay, now you're my manager, or you're a junior person in my organization, yeah. or you're a collaborator, challenge me on what I'm doing so I can bring my creativity uh, slightly differently into mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So now I have a teammate of <laughs> mm -hmm. that, but in a safe experimental way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for Thank your time. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.